Hey, welcome everybody. I just want to make a video focusing just specifically on syncretism and diving into that word. That it's Syncretism is the study of um, the, discovering the, the root source, um, which is really boils down to astrology of um, all fields of knowledge, theology, um, etymology, the all the transcendental and material physical sciences, um, they all go back through astrology as um, the way the creator of the universe operates and functions. It really is the mother science and the mother language. But I went ahead and did just a superficial type Google search. And I found that generally you're going to find the word syncretism meaning some kind of blending together of religions you know as though you're like oh we want to make peace on earth so we're gonna just sort of turn all of these religions into one kind of a thing and um i don't know it's it's almost described as some kind of a new agey way forward um when in reality <laughs> syncretism existed before all of those religions. There's no authenticity of any specific religion being sacrificed in the pursuit of syncretism. It's actually quite the opposite. It's not watered down Christianity and watered down Islam and watered down Judaism. And it, it really doesn't have anything to do with religion, necessarily, other than the fact that the religions are completely built on syncretism and encoded with syncretism and they're the books we're all most familiar with, the stories of, um, we've, unfortunately, our uh, spiritual leaders, so-called leaders, have uh, literalized the texts of the holy books, and um, the, the transcendental nature and the, the syncretic nature of the words and everything about the message contained in all those books is... is um, lost really because you the the translation has always been material literal and it hasn't been allegorical m metaphorical unless you know in certain situations if it doesn't seem too real then the interpreter the the preacher might sort of say that it's metaphor here but over here it's literal but to say it's a metaphor is one thing, to interpret that metaphor is a whole other thing. Um, and so we'll get into all of that, but uh, yeah, there's a, I, I don't know, there's thousands of registered denominations of just Christianity. There's all these different religions. They're all the same. They're all absolutely the same. They're built on astro-theological foundations. It's astrology. It's metaphysics, it's, um, let's just kind of look at the word syncretism. You know, you see that, uh, um, that syn, it syncs things up, synthesizes. Um, and just looking at words, I, I, I think about thinking syncretically, because I think that's where we all need to get. Um, and I think sort of the two, the two poles that need to be balanced in order to, kind of have a syncretic perspective in your mind is that there's the the critical is sort of the left brain way of looking at the world and the sympathetic is sort of the right brain way of looking at the world and I think we kind of get lost in polarities I think that's your left right political paradigm it's kind of summed up there a little bit you know they obviously each flirt with each other nobody's purely critical and nobody's purely sympathetic but when you kind of get it you know you get a pretty honest view of what's going on that's kind of what's happening and it's kind of what they each claim to be um but when you can kind of um rise above both of those and bridge the gaps of those. It's it's really what balancing the left and right hemisphere is all about. It's why meditation is so extremely focused on and all. Um, you know, the Bible is filled with it. You just don't know how to read it yet. Um, it's telling you to meditate. 
really, because that's how you balance this um, left and right side of your brain so that you can finally see syncretically. And it's really, really, really powerful to be able to do that. And as we get into this, you'll see that it's in the language. It's everywhere within the language. You can kind of ignore the language and pretend that words are just words. Um, or you can start doing some of your homework with astrology and the terminology and uh, start seeing how root words are connected all over the place and just certain letters. Um, you know, the S, just every time I see an S, it represents the sine wave. You know, every time I see a T, it represents the cross. Um, you know, anytime I see E-L as a prefix or a suffix, it's electricity or Saturn. Because Saturn is the elder. And um, there's other things like mag is always magnetism or Mary. And um, ion, anything that ends in ion, that's just a specific charge along the zodiac that that word represents and that's what the really the core of getting into the syncretism is all about um it's easier for me to focus on the biblical aspect of you know this is science too i i, I keep focusing on um the religions but the religions are the things that uh the, the holy books and the texts have the truth written in them, you know, whether we're able to admit that or not as adults, the, the holy books are filled with truth. Um, science books, on the other hand, not so much. Um, that's why it's pretty important to sort of not throw the uh, holy books out because of the way religion was introduced to you. Because the, nobody got a healthy introduction to religion. I don't know of anybody who did, um, but we can change that for our children if we uh, take it upon ourselves to do our own homework and then, uh, you know, teach others starting with our families. But, you know, within the, you know, I'm going to focus on Christianity a bit more because I know I'm much, I grew up in a Christian culture, I'm more familiar with the Christian stories. But again, this is all religions and this is all mythologies and all the nursery rhymes and all the fairy tales are all built into this syncretic way of explaining nature. Within Christianity, um, God, as it were, um, created the world with his voice, you know, liter in a literal sense. Um, you, but it's vibration, you know? You're creating torus fields when you speak. And the, the idea that all of this is encoded in language is, um, makes absolutely perfect sense. But you'll start seeing that all these languages are the same <laughs> across, you know, crazy different cultures that you wouldn't think have. Any. They don't seem to sound the same. But when you start breaking things down phonetically, there's a lot of root phonetics shared between the languages, you know, um, we don't, we just don't pay any attention, there's been, especially in English, you know, it's a, a, a more modern language, so there's lots of pieces of lots of other languages sort of built into there, but, you know, like a thing like Wednesday, the word Wednesday, it's just this word, right, it's a weird word, it's spelt funny, when nobody thinks a whole lot about it. Um, but in a different part of the world, you'd be very familiar with the god Woden, um, which is Mercury. And um, in in French, Wednesday is Mercredi, Mercury Day. And you start understanding why it's Wednesday. It's Woden's Day. It's just a different culture. Um, but we've stolen their phonetics, essentially, without without bringing the god over or or acknowledging why we did it um whoever we are <laughs> um we the creators of the english language um and it 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 really really goes on and on there's all sorts of examples of that um 
and you start seeing that there really is a universal phonetic language that's based on genuine vibration and and the torus fields that are created from the sounds and the specific um, nature of each of those vibrations and fields that are created. Um, it's like uh, Krishna is always surrounded by his, he's a, a cow herder, you know, he's always surrounded by his torus fields. Um, yeah, it's really, uh, it's a fascinating field of study. And, and again, I always go back to health and healing because that's what started this whole journey for me. And knowledge is power, and all of this is healing. When you start understanding that you're connected to something ancient and eternal, um, it's a really powerful effect. We've, we've been sort of led to either have blind faith in a religion or have blind faith in science. You know, science has turned into this giant mathematical equation that explains away reality, but it's built on assumptions, and everything that we do with it is based on human assumptions. And um, I'll be honest, it's just an illusion. <laughs> everything that we feel that we understand about science, um, it's not going to help you. And that's why you feel like you can't understand it, because you just look at these pictures of Einstein in front of the giant chalkboard filled with all these intense equations that you can't understand and so you just check out and you trust nasa sends a picture and you check out and you trust but when you start recognizing that there's a truth that's been hidden right in front of your eyes you um you start stepping back and start uh looking closer at the details of all the things that you haven't paid attention to because nobody's drawn any attention to it and, and given you any reason to think there's any meaning or purpose for why the letters are chosen. Like, um, here, here's just this one example, the, the word five. The word five is really phi, P-H-I, V, the Roman numeral for five, and E, the fifth letter in the alphabet. And phi is the golden ratio, and why it's related to five is that, um, and this gets a bit more complicated, but phi can be expressed purely with the number five for sort of a very unique reason. Um, but it, it gives the, the golden ratio a special attachment to the number five. And so phi is, is just phonetics, P-H-I-F-I, -I, and then V again is the, the Roman numeral for five and E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. That that's the kind of coding that's everywhere in the language. And a lot of it isn't even necessarily quite that clever. Um, you know, numbers and things like that are really important words, and so there's a lot of focus that's been put into the very exact choices of letters for those words. You know, you start thinking about eight and H. H, the, the eighth letter, and they both have this sort of G-H, this, these sort of elements to them that don't necessarily need to be there. Like eight, why is there that G-H in eight? And I don't know the answer to that or to a lot of these other things, but it does all seem to go back to the electromagnetic nature of reality and how that reality plays through the astrological fields and through our lives. And... You start getting into looking at all this stuff more, you realize that it's just every there's a code everywhere for everything, and it's in the language and it's beautiful. And um, I'm going to get more specifically into all of that, but uh, thank you again for coming along for the ride. That's syncretism, your introduction. Peace and love, all. See you next time.